Welcome everybody to Fish Strike Chronicles. I am Tess. I'm here with Donald and joining us today is Sarah. Sarah, how the hell have you been? Pretty good. Yeah, it was a wild night last night. Uh, free agency mm -hmm. was actually pretty interesting the whole weekend. Um, a lot of moves were going on around other teams, but the Yankees kind of stole the weekend last night trading Gary Sanchez. Something that I didn't think any of us ever saw coming. And the, the odd part about it is the deal itself mm -hmm. doesn't completely make any, it doesn't make a lot of sense to what the mm -hmm. Yankees direction is going in. And we had talked actually about um, Falefa as a, somebody to bring in that you're not going to be able, you're not going to be committed long-term to while you're still waiting to see where Volpe and Peraza are developing. So right. That part of the trade makes complete sense. Mm -hmm. um, but Gary and Gio being moved and Donaldson coming over and the catcher, Ben, I'm going to try to pronounce his last name, Rodved. And it just, it really created so many more. Now we have so many more issues that we have to break down with this whole thing. Another move has to come behind this for it to make sense. Mm -hmm. That's the only way that the Yankees can say this was a good move. There's got to be right. something else in the works. Is there a trade with Oakland? You know, we get, and you know, like Murphy and, and Olsen or, or Manaya. Mm -hmm. You know, Manaya. something's got to give. You know, there's got to be more to this for it. You know, otherwise it's just going to be a complete, it's going to continue to be a meltdown on social media. Because right. Twitter last night was on fire. And it was oh, exciting. Boy. I was all for it. You know, Donald and I, we, you know, we were up you know, interacting with different people till like three in the morning, four in the morning, his time. It, it was just insane. But your first reaction, Sarah, when you, when you saw the news that Gary was traded. Honestly, I wasn't shocked, but at the same time, I was kind of shocked of how, first of all, how late it was. And second of all, like how thrown under the bus everyone was when Gio went with him. Yeah. That was another thing. See, I was like, oh, you're going to get a new catcher. Okay, that's fine. I knew Gary was in the trade rumors for a couple of years now, but never went through with it because they didn't know who to get him for or how much money they were going to give so-and-so for him. Then a couple minutes later, you get another update. Gio went with him. I said, what? <laughs> I was like, what do you mean Gio went with him? This is a joke. So, of course, like, no, I was like, you know what? Let me look through and see. I, I was like, I, Geo hit me like a brick wall. I couldn't even believe it. Yeah, as much as, you know, we all know that Gary was Cashman's boy, you know, and yeah. very protected. Geo was the shock. Yeah. But one thing that we had broken down on this show was how to, when, when we were trying to figure out how to align the infield properly. Right. And if you really were going to get a shortstop, that would mean that if you can't move Glaber, he would have to go to second base with, second. with LeMay, you at third. Right. Where does that put Gio? Does Gio now turn into a utility guy? Right. You know, or do you just move on from him while his stock is still high? Right. Because he wasn't like a highly regarded player, you know, in Cleveland. And he yeah, had that he really good year for us. And was that all we were going to get? So maybe the Yankees also had that same, you know, that same thought process. Yeah. Donald, do you think that that could have been why they moved Gio as well in that deal? Yeah. Uh, first of all, um, I want to say how much I loved Gio Urshela as a Yankee. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, <laughs> you know what's funny? Um, maybe not necessarily statistically, but he was actually our fourth best hitter last year behind Judge, behind Stanton. Uh, and and Lemay, then he's right there. Rizzo right there. Basically right there is Urshela. Yeah. It was like her fourth right. best hitter. And he was our best defender. Right. Absolutely in lockdown. Now, I don't care what the analytics say. He was a wizard at third base, an actual wizard. And he was league right. average at shortstop. And what also is missing behind the whole analytics thing, right? Because I think this is this Donaldson Chase complete analytics based. Um, what's missing in the analytics thing is how great Urshel was for the locker room. And he had a mentality where he gave it every single day. He was one mm -hmm. of the only Yankees that just flat out gave it every single day. He didn't take a day off. 
Right, and, he didn't take a mental day off. He was there, and he he was yeah. throwing himself in the stands and making huge catches and stuff. That's the kind of guy you actually want to keep. Plus, he was cheap as shit. He was very yes. cheap. So, so and that's right up that's, Hell's Alley. Well, yeah. yeah, but it also <laughs> helps us because you've got yourself a dude that's a very reasonable contract, and then you can use that money to go and attack you that you desperately need, like a first baseman or a shortstop or a center fielder. Mm-hmm. You didn't really need to replace him to add more questions. That was my exactly. that was my take from the thing. So first of all, to uh, G. Warshella, if he ever comes across this video, thank you, bro. You are an awesome Yankee. And I was like, and you'll be much missed. You'll be greatly missed. So yep. um, he was the one, the only guys that didn't want traded. And I kind of want basically most of the team traded. And he was one of the <laughs> only guys I did want traded. Yeah. I love it. That's, that's exactly it. And I said, uh, there because I know there was rumors in there for like Hicks and, and some minor league guys. And I was like, no, Cashman kisses the minor league ass. Mm-hmm. Every single trade and or free agent deadline and I'm like they're not going to touch the little people what they're going to do is they're going to go to a guy that is a fan favorite and totally blow it just blow it <laughs> absolutely blow it and that's exactly what they do it's ridiculous it was, this trade was so weird because like at first the first thing I heard was Gary's gone the first tweet was like from the yes. main source was Gary's gone and I'm like oh How, this is a great yes. day I'm on baby <laughs> this is great and then I'm like, I can feel this, and oh, Falefa's coming our way. I'm like, I can live with it. He's a good glove, and I go, uh, then Marcello's the gone. G- the G. I'm like, what? And then Donaldson's now added to the No, the whole Donaldson <laughs> thing threw me off. This whole Donaldson like, thing is, is what, so what? bizarre. There's so many, like, things to break down about this move and the ramifications. Um... Donaldson's on a massive contract. He's, he's basically we've inherited his whole fifty million of his last two years yeah. of the deal. Mm-hmm. So that obviously, I, well, my first question is why could they just use that twenty one million and go into a go into free agency and use that twenty one million to go and attack shortstop? Like go give that money to Trevor Story or mm-hmm. or Korea. And you got yourself a lockdown shortstop. And if you needed to move uh, Volpe or Peraza or whoever to another mm-hmm. position, then mm-hmm. so be it. I just don't really get that aspect to it. And yeah. the the crazy thing is about it is the freaking Cubs had to do that with Chris Bryant when Patrick Wisdom came. Yeah. They moved Wisdom to third base. They made Chris Bryant go in the outfield and start shagging fly balls. Right. Like what? What move is that? I don't understand. But at the same time, I was skeptical about moving Chris about the Cubs moving Chris Bryant. But then at the same time, I was like, no, maybe he can play the outfield because he's got the versatility that some of these outfielders really don't have anymore. And he's actually done very well, even when he was with San Francisco. I don't know if he's going to stay there, but we'll see what happens. I mean, this basically tells me now that Falefa is the starting shortstop, and then yeah, he yeah. will be the shortstop until Volpe or Peraza is ready. So the Yankees have gone the yeah. uh, the route of stopgap shortstop. Yeah. Um, well, how do you guys feel about that? I'm okay with it. I mean, I looked at his stats. Everyone is raving about, oh, his numbers are terrible. I was like, okay, first of all, that was with the Rangers, and the Rangers were terrible to begin with. Yeah, so you like really can't blame after. him. Hmm. So... At the end of the day, I'm like, what he does here is not what he was probably going to do in Texas anyway. Yeah, no, for Falefa, you know, when you look at one, he had, he had the gold glove. You know, he's yeah, already right. won a gold glove. That, that's, right. that, that says something. He's under control till 2024. Okay. His pro- 2022 projections is a 265 batting average, nine home runs, 49 RBIs. And he's projected to have more doubles than anything else. So you're going to get the extra base hits out of him, you know, mm-hmm. which is good because that be, that tells me he could hit it to the gap. Yes. You know, his, you know, which is not different than what he was in 2021, mm-hmm. you know, with 200, you know, 271 batting average, eight home runs, 
You know, he had a 3.7 war for the year. And for a young kid, that's not terrible. I, I don't, you know. And so, well, I mean, I like, I like. Fuller, yeah. Um, he was somebody that we've talked about but, before. Yeah. Yes. I, I, is he more of a utility guy for me than a starter? Then probably. But I mean, if, if you stick him at the end of the, in the ninth hole, I think you can live with it. He's got a little bit yeah. of uh, yeah. athleticism. I think he stole some bags last year. Uh, you know, he can see a little bit, a little bit. But mostly, he's a glove guy. He's a really good third baseman. He's an excellent shortstop and an excellent good catcher as well. And very rarely does somebody, you know, start off as a catcher, then move to short and third, and and be very good in all three aspects. So mm-hmm. I like the fact that he's versatile. Um, so that aspect of the trade, I, I don't hate. Um, yes, I had my eye out on him. I'm, you know, I'm not overly worried about the fact he doesn't have much power. Um, I think that glove is something that we desperately need. So, hey, listen, we've got a, a very fine glove at short. If, if it was like Gary going one way and then us taking falafel, then I'm I'm on board with it. Um, it's this this Donaldson thing that that's kind yeah. of throwing me off, especially mm-hmm. with Urshela going the opposite way. Because mm-hmm. listen, if we had Urshela and uh, falafel uh, sharing time between short and third. I- I've been okay with that. Like, I think, you know, I think it's quite fine. Yes. I'm just not quite understanding taking on $50 million of a 36-year-old. He's 36, Donald. That's, th- mm-hmm. that's what doesn't really make any sense. It's almost like it had that mentality of you take our bad catcher, we'll take your bad contract. Yes. yes, you know, yes. and we'll, we'll we'll just swap our misery. Yes, you know? and that, but we've said that if you were ever going to move Gary into Sanchez, you know, uh, Gary in a, in a trade, it was going, you know, you were going to have to pay for something. You know, it, it was going to cost us to get rid of him, mm-hmm. and this is the obviously this is the cost. But I also, you know, on BaseballReference.com, I looked up Donaldson's 2022 projected numbers. And his batting average is 242, home runs 23, RBI 63. That's a big drop off. Huh? It's kind of a drop off, though. For somebody with $21 million. His 2021, he had a 3.2 war, a 347 batting average with 26 home runs. So Hmm. he's projected to pretty much have the same year as he did last year. Okay. You know, he's not going to be that. I, and I think with all the other the, the other guys in the lineup, with Judge and Stanton, mm. you know, he's not, you know he's not going to be relied upon to be our sole power guy. It might yeah. relax him a little bit. We might get a little more out of him than than is expected. Right. It's so yeah, twenty twenty one. He had twenty six homers, seventy two RBIs. Um, it was two thousand nineteen where he had a really. good uh, in Atlanta, he had uh, well, he had the year in Atlanta. RBIs, he was on fire. Yes, that was that was a good year that he had uh, in Atlanta. Ninety four RBIs in Atlanta hmm. and a hundred walks. Hmm. Um, so two thousand nineteen was great. Two thousand twenty yeah. was obviously the shortened season. We're not going to look too much into it, although it was a very poor year that he had in the short time that he played. Twenty one. Yeah, um, seventy-two RBIs is not great. I'm sorry for for somebody that's earning that kind of twenty-one million dollars. He should have more. Yeah, he probably should. Although his stats, his uh, you know the analytics, the 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 baseball nerd numbers. Um, if you look at that, it looks like he underperformed those numbers. So here's what: if you want to be positive about this trade, right? The 2021 MLB percentile rankings, right? Average exit velo is in the 99 percentile. It do- doesn't get much better than that. It, that's mm-hmm. like the very, 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 very top. Is okay. uh, XWBA 92 percent percentile? His bio- barrel percentage, hard hit percentage, 95 percent. Max max elo exit velo 93 percent. Um, hmm. Hard hit percentage in 95. Slug percentage, 92%. Walk percentage, 
walk percentage, 94%. So all those are trained into a big power guy, right? I mean, those yes. are, you know, he, he hits the, his average, average exit below, those are kind of like Stantonian average, average exit below. Right? I was going to say, it's like, is really, really yeah. good. Yeah. Um, he does strike out. Um, huh. And he's slow as heck. He's <laughs> the sprint speed 12th percentile. He's slow. Um the the, the problem is he's he's 36. <laughs> he's, uh, you know what I mean? It's like there's no upside to this. Yeah. You're, he's you're taking 36. on yeah. taking on 21 million dollars per year. There's no upside. You know, it's only gonna get worse unless dude like is Tom Brady. He's not going to be hitting, like, you know, he's not going to be like goat stuff in his 40s. I don't understand why you're inheriting that kind of money when you could have used that money. If you're inherit, if they had, the twins were taking on his contract or most of his contract, mm -hmm. then you think, okay, you know what? If, if it was like a watered down instead of inheriting all of his 50 million and it was kind of shared, then you think, okay, well, you know what? He's going to play above average defense. And he's going to give right. you some pop from the right side. I, I can live with that. But that kind of money, you would think, why if you're going so high into the salary tax threshold when you could just go into free agency and just go and get the best players available with that well, money? Yeah. Why did you know? Why did if they're going to spend that money or, or take on a contract of that that money? Why didn't yeah. they look at a guy like mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Story or or Korea? Uh, it's it, they're obviously all in on Volpe. I get it. That's fine. But <laughs> there's nothing that would have precluded them to just have moved Volpe into a third baseman or a second baseman or whatever, or even Peraza, whatever. Whoever they, their highest one is Volpe. But why do they have to be so locked in? If you've got the best player available in Korea, I mean, and you can't use the argument about cheating anymore. When when Donaldson and, and Cole hate each other, well, I, I do want to get into that about the fact that you know they don't have a good relationship, mm -hmm. <laughs> and mm -hmm. Donaldson is not. You know, last year us fans we tore him apart, mm -hmm. and it's like you know what if you're gonna, uh, it, it's getting it. You know, sometimes getting a bet with the enemy is not the answer. No, and it seems like that's the route that they're going. Yeah, you know, not intent. You know, within the fans' point of view. Uh -huh. Yeah, you know, obviously they they're all about you know the numbers and just making sure that they have you know reliable players. Right. And but the fact that you know if you, if Cashman and Hal didn't realize all the you know the vitriol from the fan base towards Donaldson with all the spine attack, mm -hmm. they really just are clueless and have not. They're just have, so they have stupid. No, yeah, Donaldson was a whistleblower. He was a, he was the spider attack whistleblower. Yes, but the but the problem was not necessarily him blowing the whistle on spider attack because that was something that needed to be addressed. Though his problem was the fact he blamed it all on Garrett Cole. He basically right. put most of it on Garrett Cole, and he right. basically said that Garrett Cole is not as the Cy Young pitcher that he is without spider attack. That is a big statement then, to make. And then, this is the thing that also got to me. You put Trevor Bauer in the same sentence. That was another yeah. thing. Right. You, you, dude, you lost me. You lost me. You're done. You said, you're done. <laughs> it's just, yeah, you're done. It's like he's very outspoken. Mm -hmm. um, it's, again, is that really the, the Yankees are very buttoned up? I mean, it, it probably helps them that they have somebody in the locker room that's a bit fiery and he's outspoken. Uh, but his relationship with Garrett Cole, yes. I, I don't know. How can he patch that up? Oh, sorry, Garrett. Uh, you're actually a really good pitcher. Sorry. My bad. Mm. You know, I mean, it's kind of hard to <laughs> – I don't know. Like, Jim yeah, is such know, a great – he was such a positive locker room influence. He was a happy guy, mm. and he – and don't let his smiles change the fact that he balled out, and he balled out far above his, his. You know the, you know if you if you look at the analytics side of it, right? And I'm pretty sure that's what the Yankees are doing. Urshela's analytics are not impressive, right? Hmm. 
Donaldson's analytics are incredibly impressive. And the that's Yankees probably are what all they looked at. in on all of it. That's yeah. what the Yankees are. Mm-hmm. They don't mm-hmm. look at they don't look at what their eyes are telling you. They don't look at what your heart is telling you, your gut tells you. They are all in on the 99 percentiles mm-hmm. and the 95 percentiles and the hard hit percentage and the, your WXBO nonsense, whatever all this stuff no, means, they're all in on it, right? Mm-hmm. And that's why they made this move. If you, and that's what my kind of big problem is with the way the Yankees are going. You don't have to go all in on analytics. You can use it as a tool, but your eyes and your heart can tell you this guy is not somebody you want to move on from. He's kind of gives you what the Yankees need. And then you move on to areas where they do need to attack. Mm-hmm. And, and it's so and it's such a weird trade because I'm not a Gary Sanchez fan. I'm delighted he's gone. And now there'll be some fans that are listening in that completely disagree with me, and that's totally fine. I was not a Sanchez fan. I just don't like I wasn't either, can't, to be honest. Like, he just you. can't play defense. He's the worst defender I've ever seen. Absolutely yeah. horrific defender. So the fact that we're moving on from him, I think, is a step forward. But then we've got <laughs> this, 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 the trade that's ended up being doesn't make yeah. any sense to me. Mm-mm. What do you guys know about Ben? This Ben dude. I mean, apparently he's not great defense. No, nobody not. <laughs> I don't know it's, anything. It's and so I minimal, said to really. Bobby, it's crazy. I said to Bobby, I was like, what about Wilson Contreras? Yeah. Did you ever think about Wilson Contreras anywhere in this situation? I don't care if the Yankees are the biggest melting pot in sports. They mm. still stink regardless. Yeah. There were yeah. cancers available. Right. There were cancers available that they let slip. If they were looking to replace Gary Sanchez, then why didn't they get jump in on the actual catchers that were a, a massive upgrade? There Great. was a ton of them. But he let them all slip, and now we're we're really like the we have the leftovers market, of massive. Yeah, the free agent market for catcher, the free agent yeah. market for catcher is done, awful. And right? the guy, so the, unless the, you make a trade for Murphy, I don't quite know where they're gonna go with it. Yeah, so I, I don't know. That's, that's coming from somebody that doesn't like Gary Sanchez. And I think that basically me and you could be an upgrade defensively to Gary Sanchez, but I don't even know if this this move is actually that much of an upgrade. It's just no, very no. odd. It's we, really not. We even said that you know, if we you know, as much as we wanted to move on, you know, we were all ready to move on from Sanchez. Who was out there that was like, oh, it, it, it's a no brainer, you know? And you know. Sarah and I were talking, you know, we were texting back and forth about Wilson Contreras, and mm-hmm. it's a name that doesn't come up a lot. It would have made sense. You know, but no, it's that's too obvious of a move for Cashman. You know, and we yes. ended up with, with this guy, Ben. And his 2001 stats, he had 89 at-bats, um, three home runs, fifth, only 15 hits for a 1.69 uh, batting average. So he's never even really played. Uh, did they bring him up from the minor leagues at one point when he was with the Twins? Yeah, or no, was those were his major. A... League, those were that was his major league line with the Twins last year. Um, uh, this is just so he was he's their like backup. A... So, may, may, that's why I'm like, this can't be it. No, I really think it's that this be is, more. I think this is. Uh, I've got an upgrade update. Up from John Heyman, which you got eight minutes ago. Every time I read a John Heyman tweet, I usually feel sick. And <laughs> this is one of them. Yankees are pessimistic on Freeman and have said no to the ask of Volpe for Matt Olson. So Anthony Rizzo seems to be the most realistic first base option for them. Okay. And that's okay. not so bad. Okay. Why is that a bad thing? That's not it, terrible. It yeah. is a bad thing. It's a bad thing. Uh, yeah, I know because Rizzo was so bad for us last year. I don't know how we could bring him back. No, it's it's not. It's the optics. It's the optics. We need a first base. We need a shortstop, and we're not getting the best on the market. We're getting- yeah, but the other thing is when you when you take into account one, he wants he wants more than five years. He he said to, he didn't even he decided to go into free agency because he turned down a contract with the Braves. In a year that they were on their way to the World Series. Mm-hmm. And he turned down a five year deal. He wants long term. Right. It's, he and, wants and what Corey Seeger wanted. 
But why can't the Yankees give him long term? Would you sign him at, thir- at 31, 32 years old for a 10 year deal? For 10 years? He wants long. He, uh, this is he his- wants long term. Yeah. I don't know. I just go best player available. Man. Well, I just you- make it work. I don't care how you make it work. If you need to lessen the years and then absolutely obliterate him with salary. Then do it. I just just go best player available with the New York Yankees for God's sake. If you look at this roster and you got Donaldson and Rizzo and stuff, th- that is not an upgrade. I am sorry, it is not an upgrade. I'd rather. I'd, I don't think all of a sudden you know. It's an I old, don't understand why all of a sudden that can't play. You know, it's it's not a case he that they can't play. It's not a case that they can't play. But you need to start looking at the, at the bigger picture here. I mean, if you're if you bring if you sign Rizzo, fine. But you need to have upgraded a shortstop big time. You can't run Why, out an Aaron Hicks situation, no. and you're taking away Gary Sanchez's bat as as unproductive as it was. He was still a guy that's going to give you 30, 25, 30 home runs. You're getting rid of that, right? Rizzo's not really that kind of power back. So if you then bring in Aaron Hicks, Aaron Hicks doesn't give you anything. No, so Hicks doesn't give you nonsense. No. So it's like if you look at the bigger picture and then Donaldson's numbers weren't very good last year. He wasn't very good the year before. So I'm very concerned. Like the only way that I yeah. would live with a falafel – Donaldson left side of the infield is that the Yankees go all in on first base and whatever it takes to get Olsen, you get it done. So that you have a monster in the middle of the order. So if you don't have that, then whatever it takes to get Freddie Freeman. You can't sell to me. You can't sell to the fan base that Rizzo is the answer. You can't. What about the optic that maybe Freddie Freeman just hasn't shown interest in coming to New York? Which is why the Yankees aren't hopeful that they'll be able to change his mind. It's possible money talks, baby. CC Sabathia actually wanted to go back to the West Coast when he was a free agent. And the Yankees went in and it was like, money, 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 baby. And he ended up being one of the best free agent signings we've ever had in the history of the Yankees. So you can make, you can change minds with money. I'm sorry, Scherzer did not want to go to the Mets. I'll guarantee you that. When he was dreaming of a being a free agent, his plan was not to go to New York, and it certainly wasn't the Mets. But the Mets went money, 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 and now he's Mr. Met. Now he's wearing an apple. So he is Mr. Met. So you and can, you can technically, make money talk. Everything really want Freeman, money talks. Go ahead, Sarah. <laughs> Te- technically, technically, the Mets are looking for their playboy, pretty much. Because what does DeGrom give you? Injury innings, however many times he gets Bob's injured. One of the best pitchers to ever walk the earth. Exactly. Yeah, My but Scher- but Scherzer has a little bit of a personality too for the public. DeGrom's very, you know, that's what very they reserved. Yep. It's that's a great signing want. for the Mets. Yeah, they've had an awesome offseason. The Yankees, I don't know what their plan is. What is their plan? I don't think they we always say we say this for the last three there months. never is a plan. That's exactly. the problem. There never is, because guess what? You play the first 15 games of the season, you bomb. The next 35, you win the next 35. Then what? You get to like the all-star game and the home run derby, and all these guys who want to hit bombs for a stupid reason end up sucking after the home run derby. There's your answer. It's like we need to start. We need a number two starter. So we made an offer for Verlander for 20-odd million bucks. Right, that didn't didn't happen. happen. And instead of pivoting, we've basically let every other good starting pitcher on the market go. Uh, So, what was their plan for number two starter? We don't have a number two starter. We've got one reliable starter, Garrett Cole. That's it. So that's another question that we have. So we need a starting pitcher. So we have to go to Oakland and get Manea because if we don't get Manea, then what else? What else are we going to do? Because the Mets just signed that. Excellent um, pitcher from Oakland, too. So, Mane is available. We have to make that happen because if we don't, then we don't have a number two starter. So, mm-hmm. that's a big question. I don't know bit what we're doing with catcher. Is he Yoka an everyday catcher? No. So, catcher needs to be addressed. I don't know whether we make a trade. If we 
say, say we sign Rizzo, do we make a trade for Murphy and uh, Minea? Is that what we're going to do? Yeah, that's I mean, gonna, you know, there's a lot of options out there. You know, but well, if the talks are going, you know, if you knew a lot of the talks are going to be Volpe, then yeah. they should not have gone with the the, the stopgap. They should have just signed a long term shortstop and just said, look, we just with our backs are against. We have no choice but to just move on from this prospect. Right. We're, you know, we're, we're missing too many opportunities. Volpe better deliver. <laughs> oh, he definitely because we're losing every single update I'm getting at least from ESPN, CBS, or MLB Network. I'm literally getting, oh, we didn't get this guy because of Anthony Volpe. We didn't get yeah. this guy because of Anthony Volpe. And I'm like, are you serious? I understand the guy is a minor leaguer. Totally get it. He's Cashman's little burn baby. We yeah. get it. But he comes up here, dude. It's a totally different storybook. Yeah. No one delivers like Andrew Velasquez did when they brought him up last year. That was shit out of luck, pretty much. Yep. So, you, know, you got a really good point there. It's like they're putting a lot of pressure on Volpe. Exactly. Like they, could have, they, could have, they could have taken the pressure off Volpe by going and attacking free agency. So right. there's less of a pressure on him to come there's up. There's more pressure if now. Yeah. If we don't answer the shortstop position and we've not really answered third base either, then he's basically going to come in as a savior. He has to. Because if he doesn't he come to. on and rake, absolutely rake, then fans are going to be like, uh, Trevor Story was available, guys. Uh, <laughs> Carlos Correa was available, guys. Uh, Seager was available, guys. But you've decided to pass on all these guys. Go oh, ahead, my God. Every time you say Corey Seager... I want to blow a gasket because we had him. We had him. Poof, yeah. He's gone. Yeah. Simeon. Simeon. <laughs> hey, how many home runs did Simeon hit for Toronto last year? 40 exactly. plus. You could have had a scenario where he plays shortstop this year and then move him to second base next year. With Volpe's shocked. ready. Ugh, ugh. Or, or shortstop for two years and then Volpe when he's ready in like 2024. Whatever. That made sense. Mm -hmm. He's a great hitter. And he's in his prime. That's what I'm talking about. Great hitters in their prime. That's what you should be putting your money into. But what are the Yankees doing? Donaldson putting... is old. He's 36. He's been injured for four years already. He's Cole's years. hater. Yes. <laughs> like, he looks old. I just saw him walk into Yankee Stadium today. Look at Twitter. I was like, dude, he's got great hair. He's old, man. Kyle Seeger looks better. No more gray hair than I do. <laughs> so, like, oh what, my god! Why does Brian Cashman love guys that are injured from the right side to have big home runs? Because and strike he out is a lot? injured in the brain, Donald. Haven't you noticed that? It is. I just don't know what the plan is. <laughs> what there is the never plan? is a plan. Give me a are plan. You, I'm, do you I'm notice gonna keep this? On Twitter. There never is a plan with them. It's like I said, the, the shortstop eventually will bomb somewhere. And then you got to bring up all these minor league guys that are, do you know that they could work under pressure? You physically have to regardless, mm. but you're going from a little minor league field to the biggest stage in the world. Of course yeah. you're going to shit your brakes. And even if Volpe comes in and does exactly what the Yankees want from the get-go, you don't know three or four years down the line because Gary Sanchez came out all guns blazing. He mm -hmm. was incredible. He was mm -hmm. on a Hall of Fame trajectory. See with Gleyber Torres. Gleyber Torres comes up. He was on a Hall of Fame trajectory. He had I don't know. What 30 the hell home happened runs. to him? And he's batting 300. He's fantastic. He's awesome. He's all world. And now I can't wait till he's traded. So, like, and this is the same with Gary Sanchez. I couldn't wait for him to be traded. So you don't know. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is you do not know. The only thing you do know is Carlos Correa could rake and he could pick it at short. And he is a all-world player. I, That's I one thing I do it, know. Yes. It's That's the, the one thing I do know. I do not know full thing. You don't know. No one knows. Cashman does not know. He might say he does. He really he doesn't because you don't really know what's going to happen. And so the pressure would have been off him had they actually planned ahead. Simeon, 
If they don't want to put all that money into Seager, fine. Simeon was your answer. You put him over to second base. You'll play a very good second base after Volpe's ready. And you can move, you know, you could, that's at least a bit of versatile that made sense. This Donaldson thing feels like a step sideways or maybe a modicum improvement. No, it's a jump off a cliff. That's what it is. For 21 million bucks? <laughs> how is that? How does that help? It doesn't. That's the problem. We package it's, him in another deal? I, you got to put I, him in bubble wrap at third base. Imagine. I mean, is there an opportunity where they maybe ask somebody else to take on his salary and we trade him? Because I just don't understand his fit here. I don't, I, I don't, I don't know how it is. I, I don't understand the fit either. All I know is that he's, they're going to be Rocky and Adrian in the dugout if Cole wants to start with them. That's the only <laughs> thing that's going to make Adrian. television. Adrian. <laughs> that's the only thing that's going to make television. Uh, it, it, as much as it is as confusing and, and, as this all is, it's hard to just say, you know, you can't say it's a bust just yet. You know, it's frustrating, but it's not a bust. Yeah. And we are just going to have to write, you know, one, like we said in the beginning of the show, we got to see where this trade leads. We got to see what it leads to because it better lead somewhere else. Oh Lord, and please Jesus. You, you, you don't know what, you know, with somebody like Donaldson, what spark it may give him near the end of his career to play at Yankee stadium. It might light a fire under him, and he really – he has a, a very similar year to when he was with Atlanta. If we yeah. can get that year out of him, if we can get that or little motivation, I'm all for it, especially he's if that – He's 36. He'll be 37 next year. What do you expect well, you, from he's him? Old. To me, he's young. So let's, you know, let's put the <laughs> – No, down. for an athlete, he is old. Yeah. If he's a 36-year-old DH, he actually played DH most of last year. So you leave oh, him as the DH, you give Stan and Mortal Alfio play like he deserves. So who's playing third base? LeMayu. LeMay who's playing third base. Great. Okay. So LeMay or you third. bring up one of Cashman's little buggies and throw him. So we've base. added another DH, man. That's another thing. The Yankees are unathletic. They need young guys in their prime that can give you more than dudes that just need to be DHs in this stage. I mean... New York is the city of old people, okay? So is Los Angeles. It's like, why? Cashman loves these old DH guys that are big home run powers that are getting on the older side that love injuries, that have some injuries, and that's that's what he loves. He Mm -hmm. doubles down, home run hitters. The home run hitters, he triples down on it. Yep. You know, he is I, no you know, one's you know, like bad dream I it had. doesn't work. No. I want to. I want to and, and get towards the end here with, with this dream I had scenario I had in my head. Yeah, the dream. We meet. We meet the twins again in the postseason like we always do, and normally mm-hmm. they're just kind of like, yeah, okay, we just flick them off. Wouldn't it be a kick in the head if we lose the series to a Sanchez home run? <laughs> Yes. Wouldn't that be a kick? Yes. I don't, see I'm the, I don't see the Twins going to the postseason, but there could be a scenario where the Yankees are looking for the chasing, a playoff spot, or the division. They play the Twins, and then Gary Sanchez hits a walk-off grand slam, and the Yankees lose. And then the Yankees either don't win the division or are out of the playoffs. You know, or, you know, Stanton has a, you know, 112 mile an hour line drive that Gio just kind of snags on the baseline. You know, and then there's oh, so I'm like, this is where I'm like, all right, you know what, go to bed. <laughs> because or it was like the, the the field of dreams game. Okay, judge and stand and let's hit bombs. Then you get what's his face from the White Sox. Tim Anderson, freaking yeah. little shithead, the size yeah. of Chuck Knobloch. But well, you're on really? something there, Sarah, because um Last year, we had semi-MVP years from Aaron Judge and Jen Carlos Dan. They were right. fan-freaking-tastic. Right. And you had a young caliber year from Garrett Cole. Right? And still get normally, beat out by Robbie the Dick Ray. Right. Again. So normally, though, you would think if your three best players mm-hmm. have representative years, you're going to have a good season. 
but the Yankees didn't. They tanked. They were they were embarrassed in the wild card. They were embarrassed most of the year, and they were embarrassed in the wild card. So it shows that how broken most of this roster is. So my and question is, how does how does this trade push us forward? I think it's a sideways move. Like if you then make a trade with Oakland, then you, you know what I think. Tech and Murphy, and Olsen, and you become the Yankee Athletics, and you pair that with this trade, then you think, okay, I can see the direction they're going. I'm okay with it. But if it's not, if it's just a standalone trade, and then we just we just sign Rizzo in free agency, this team is no better than it was last year. In fact, it's probably worse. Yeah, and the thing is, on top of that, is the fact that all these judge rumors are flying around. Oh, but he's going to go off into free agency if Cashman doesn't pay him. <clears throat> I would love to know where Judge is going to go this season. No, and everybody's well, like, I think I that's why they him. don't want. I think that's why they don't want to sign Korea and they don't want to sign Story. They want to give Aaron Judge a massive, massive contract. And he better and own up it, to that shit. <laughs> I'm just saying, he better own up to it because Stanton saved your ass how many times? Cole saved your ass on the mound how many times? Dude, I totally understand. You yeah, were the no, face no, of this no, franchise. No, 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 for that guy behind you right there. Oh, I People know. People should they start give appreciating him. Ex- thank you. I'm a big thank Stanton you. stan. I'm a big Stanton thank you. stan. Thank you. Tell me why you like the big Stanton. Big G. Tell me why you love him. <laughs> Honey, listen. <laughs> it, 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 it took me a while don't get me wrong, to like the guy, okay? Because he had a bit of an attitude when he was with Miami because he was a hothead, pretty much. Then Jeter wants to be like, okay, we don't want older men anymore on this team. We want to start young and work up to the old. That way they retire. But Jeter's plan didn't work. So then you bring him here. And of course he does what he usually does. And then you get the haters. Of course, Sarah used to be the hater. Because she listened to the line of idiots that followed. Then she woke up one day and said, you know, if Judge were to tank, which we realized he did this offseason by marrying Marilyn the bitch Monroe, (laughs) let's see how he does at the plate. Then you got big boy behind me like, oh, I'm single as a Pringle. Let's see what I can do. If Cashman puts me in the fucking game or if Boone wants to be like, oh, we're going to keep John Carlo in the field for a week. Let's see how he does. Dude, that's what I want because you can't keep Stanton on the damn bench. You keep him on the bench. He's going to plunk. Yeah, that was our big argument. We wanted him in the outfield so bad. We're like, why are yeah. you, we, you know, how did he Another go from why? for Donaldson? Throw Donaldson in the DH, get one of Cashman's little minor league Mickey Mouses to go play third base since he loves them so much, and let Stanton play in the fields. Yep. Who plays center field? Gallo? Exactly. Judge? Brett Gardner? Brett Gardner, they're going to roll it back. Oh, we also signed Tim LaCastro. Really sorry, Yankee fans. We should have mentioned we signed Tim LaCastro. Yes. Yeah, all okay, problems are solved. <laughs> all problems are solved. We're okay. We're okay. We got our center field option. But yeah, well, he's good until he pulled. I felt so bad for the guy last year. Yeah. He had a bad like, Really? Uh, I'm, I, I can't it's, hit on the cash up. I can't. It, it's he's a triple A outfielder. He's a yeah. triple A outfielder. He's a sixth option to play center field. He is not a starting caliber center fielder. For the New York Yankees. You are not, you're not, he's not even a bench player for the New York Yankees. Put him there. He'll do work. Hey, the best. Tyler Wade did work last year. What a mess. What a mess. I thought we were going to do our walk in and start this podcast talking about Aaron Judge, Aaron Judge, Aaron Boone saying that that Gio Rochelle is going to be our starting shortstop. (laughs) That was, and then hours later, Rochelle's gone. Like, it was a joke. Nothing, commu- yeah, no communication at all. None, none, absolutely what? none. You would think and, that and did, you would think Cashman, you know, after the whole thing, after Boone's mishap, uh, you know, that they thought, you know, Chris and Lynn talked about on the upper deck yesterday, 
Yeah. After after Boone's mistake of saying that, you know, that which I understand he's got to say it, but, you know, like this is a win now roster, you know, this team could win and blah, blah, blah. But he, he exaggerated the point too much to where yeah. the joke. Mm-hmm. You would think that Cash would be like, all right, until they get until spring training, until opening day, just shut up about every player. Don't, bring, <laughs> no, don't mention anybody by name. Because everybody's available. Said anything. Apparently. Yeah. Clearly everybody's available. And you know what? We have to give a shout out to our cool host Rob because he did say that Rochelle was going to get traded this offseason. Yeah, he did. And I didn't think it yeah. was going to happen. I yeah. did not think that that he was going to be traded I, this offseason. I had a feeling he would. I kind of I kind of remember when Rob actually said that on one of the episodes that Urshela yeah. might be getting the boot. And then I kind of knew Voight and possibly Glaber was next. Yeah. But Glaber's a shot chance right now because we do need a second baseman and we know he can play second base. But listen, yeah. with Voight, he came in guns blazing yesterday. He knew what was going to happen to him. <laughs> I'm just saying. He was like the rested bitch face on his St. Louis ass. And I was like, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah, curb your language. We're on television. <laughs> Jeez. Listen, I could be Steve Harvey for a day, okay? This is a family show now. Uh, yeah. We're no longer the we're no longer the X-rated <laughs> p- Pinstripe Chronicles. We're actually the family show now. Oh, so it's the girl the from Jersey. You gotta get with the times here, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't that bad. <laughs> I could be worse. I'm just yeah. limiting it down right now. But no, it, it's no. funny, yo. You're talking about, you know, you talked a lot about the infant. And what does this mean for Higashioka? Is, is is he now the starting catcher? Like, who is catching opening day? Probably Higgy. <laughs> I'm just saying, probably Higgy. Well, we know Cole's going to catch up. Well, he definitely will catch for Cole. Yeah. No, I like yeah. him. Yeah. But, yeah. I like him a lot. I like him a lot. I like him as a platoon catcher. Mm-hmm. I like him a lot. Um, I'm just saying that there's much better catching options out there than this Ben dude. But apparently, the Yankees really like him, so he must be. He must have a help. And one. Tanner Swanson worked with him, I guess, when Tanner was with the Twins okay. or something. That was what okay. Jack Curry said yesterday. I saw the okay, update. Cool. And I was like, when Jack Curry says something, listen, Jack Curry has guns blazing. Yeah, more he's, than he's awesome. payment, he's been, uh, more than passing. Yeah. He knows the inside scoop, I feel like, before yeah, anybody right. else does. You're right. And he's I got the writer's perspective like me, so you could go write a book about how much you hate Carlos Correa, and it would sell. <laughs> Just say it. <laughs> right, well, we got, you know, regardless of what comes next, it better be good. Yep. It's... it's there's, there's got to be more. That's all I can say. There's got to be more to this. There has to be more. Because <laughs> it's, it's, not, not, it's not only mind-blowing, it's mind-boggling. And yeah. It, and that's pretty much it. Um, that's going to wrap things up for us today. Sarah, thanks for coming on today and joining us. Thank you. And we, we, we really enjoy your energy when you're yeah, on. Yeah, thank you, that. Sarah. Thank and you uh, the energy. remember, like, share, comment, and subscribe. Check us out on sportname.com slash player and on Northeast Streaming Sports on Roku. Wear your pen strides for pride and play hard.